Here's an in-depth tutorial for keying a person with uh, notably fuzzy hair over a white background. The steps are going to be to key the hair, color the hair, set a holdout via a key, and set a holdout using masks. Whenever keying anything, it's best to key the hardest part first. And in this case, that's the hair. So we have this preset, key hair, and all this preset script does is it sets your transfer mode to stencil alpha, which is keying, and then the matte type to hair. To get the best results, you want to look at the image and try to think about the range of the hair. So for this image, the background is white and the hair is black. So when we're setting a key, we want to create a relationship between the brightest part of the background and the darkest part of the hair. And the hope is that the key will be an even fall off between the two, so when we have grays that are in between, they receive the right keying value. So with this new hair mode, we'll click once on the background, and uh, with that in mind, we'll try to find the brightest part of the background, which looks like it's about here. One click. Uh, this mode is different than the other modes. In the other modes, you can click and drag all over the place and sample a whole bunch of uh, selections, and then a whole bunch of counter selections by alt-clicking. With this one, you only get one click to choose one background color, or weird things are going to happen, so just keep that in mind. Then we're going to find the darkest part of the hair, and I'll click that. So at this point, we're not worried about losing the face and the rest of the image, because those we can uh, get back with another key. So just to give you an example of why we're doing that, uh, I'm just going to use a default instance of composite brush. Set this to uh, normal. I'll leave the matte type on hard. So I'm just going to click and drag over this character's face, and then I'll click over the background. Probably remove some of that hair detail there. I'll explain precision in a separate tutorial. And the point is, it's pretty easy to get this hard key getting all these easy colors that aren't a blend between the background and the hair. So we're not even worried about that at all. But anyway, going back, let's just uh, actually, before I do that, let's look at just the alpha channel. So the next step is to bring down your matte high level and clip that about as much as you can without getting rid of too much hair detail. So around here, you can see that the hair is going to start to go away. Any further than that, probably bad news. So let's back that off a little. And uh, don't worry about any of this excess stuff in the background. It's really just important that we're keeping this hair detail and we'll deal with all of this crap later. So going back to color. And now the big problem is that the hair is the wrong color because it's a blend between its original color, which is black, and the background color, which is white. So in general, this is probably a good time to put in a background image because you don't really know what you're looking at without that background image in there. And actually in this case, because it's a bright background image, it doesn't really matter and it looks fine. But we're gonna go ahead and correct this color anyway because if you're putting this on a darker background, that might be problematic. We're going to use an effect called Remove Color Matting, Channel, Remove Color Matting, and then just sample a background color. So then I'll turn this on and then toggle this. And it does just that. It basically, uh, it divides by this color and it gives you the original color of the hair. Now, this isn't like the advanced spill suppressor. This doesn't work if you don't have an alpha channel. So this isn't changing the color of the hair at all. It's doing nothing. What this is doing is it's looking at the alpha values and we're saying uh, this value here is fully opaque. This value here is fully transparent. These are partially transparent. So you should take this gray background color and affect this 0%, this 100%, and divide this one, you know, about 50% by this color and then the result of that will be its original color. So that's how that works. So let's actually take a look at remove color matting in a little bit more detail. So here are three images. Let's just look at them together. So this has been matted on black, meaning that it had a black background when the alpha channel was generated. This was matted on green, had a green background. Let me just uh, kill that layer. You get the idea. And uh, white also the same. So this remove color matting, I don't think it was actually really made for compositing in this specific case, but the math kind of factors out the exact same way so we can use it. So if we, uh, if we take a look at this, let's look at the alpha values here. Again, I'm sorry if I'm being redundant, but uh, this is the in-depth tutorial, you know what you signed up for. 
if we use remove color matting and we set this to green now let's see that over a background remove color matting knows to look at this alpha channel and say whatever this original rgb straight was here use the alpha channel and divide by this green which the user has informed must have been the original background color and guess what the original color was here and in this case it nails it except for out here where you can't really see anything anyway so let's just take this uh, remove color matting uh, keep in mind I'm still in alpha straight mode which is not respecting the alpha channel it's uh, I didn't actually break anything but I just want to show you all right let's do remove color matting here and we'll set this to white and then the default which is remove color matting with black so that's what the effect does and the composite brush hair mode was actually built with this in mind so that way the key would be the same fall off that remove color matting would be expecting to restore the color okay so again let's get our background on the next thing we want to do is uh, restore this original image and uh, I have this set hold out here so just click it and make sure composite brush is selected uh, one error that people kind of run into once in a while is they'll think that they're working with this and they'll actually have this selected and they'll cause a whole bunch of chaos or they'll have the two of these selected and then they'll go to click and drag and it won't work just one instance selected so when I click here it does fill up the whole image but that's just because the way that the medium mode works is it bases a key based on the point samples that you have so right now it only has one point sample and it's saying oh everything should be opaque and then I'll go alt click out here for the background color and uh, now that's designated as transparent it's gonna look at all the colors and uh, take a guess based on how similar they are to the uh, positive selection here and the negative selection here whether they should be opaque or transparent so now you can just go around and actually brush so just clicking and dragging over the face over this hair and what's really important is to remember that we already have this hair key set up with this instance so this is a holdout so we should really be alt clicking over this and again just give it a little bit more data if it ever gets confused in this one area this hair color right here is extremely similar to the hair color which is a blend between the background and the foreground so this is like a light gray and that's from blending between the black of the hair and the white of the background and this is that same exact light gray but it's because of the highlight on the hair. So in which case, this is a color-based keyer at this point in time, we're having a little difficulty separating these two because they're the same color. So let's take a look at this matte completely alone for a second. Set this to stencil alpha. Okay, so there are some pieces here, but overall not too bad. So one of the things we want to do is we probably want to use this matte choker. And we just want to choke in on these areas here and uh, keep this away from the detailed edges of the hair at, at this point I'm going to set this back to restore original RGBA and turn these back on maybe not quite that much just a little bit and we can set a blur too if we want to and then there's two ways we can go about fixing this one little area right here and I think the easiest would be to set another holdout so I'm just going to duplicate this instance of a composite brush and reset it I'm going to set this to restore original RGBA and all that does is it brings back the original pixels before uh, anything happens here so let me just uh, tangent into that for a second I'm going to use generate fill and I'll make this completely red so the whole layer is just completely red shut off the other instances of composite brush restore original I'm just clicking and dragging it's bringing back the original color and alpha values of the layer I'll reset that lose that fill so now I'll scrub over this one little patch here and let's look at this mat alone for just one second so I can kind of grab all these areas if I want to okay cool we'll go back into our composite turn the background back on turn these effects back on set this back to restore original RGBA and now that we know this is making a pretty good solid holdout mat we're just going to choke this inward and add just the tiniest bit of blur 
That's looking pretty good. And now if I just slide this background a little bit, you're gonna notice that the eyes are actually transparent. And this is something that's gonna be a little bit uh, tough to do anything about. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer, uh, remove the effects, and solo it. And the reason why this is tough is that the eyes are basically the same color as the background. Background being designated as transparent, eyes being designated as opaque, uh, just doesn't work. So let me throw on an instance of composite brush to kind of illustrate this point. I'll use hard, set this to normal. So in this case, really the best solution is just to do a manual mat. So I'm just gonna move this upwards so we can kind of see that problem. So I think the best way to do this is to use an effect called CC Composite. So that's under Channel, CC Composite. And where it says RGB only, uh, what this is doing is this is restoring the original colors of the image. We don't want this to be RGB only. We want this to restore red, green, blue, and alpha. So let's just draw a mask for this. There's the mask. And under Effects, we're going down to CC Composite, and under Compositing Options, hit the plus button, and then we have to choose the mask. So we only have one mask, and that's the one. So if I move this mask around, it's just restoring the original image. So there is a mask tracker out there, there is Mocha, but this is very easy, so let's just keyframe it. Putting a keyframe here on Mask Path, and then moving over, keeping these eyes in. Okay, that's good that our eyes are closed there. And I'm just gonna add a five pixel feather, just because. And let's take a look. So again, this is a free update for anyone who owns Composite Brush. The update is version 1.3. You can check it out at aescripts.com slash composite brush.